Live from Boston, Massachusetts, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering HP Big Data Conference 2015, brought to you by HP Software. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Boston, Massachusetts for a special presentation from theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. Um, we're here at HP Big Data Conference, hashtag HP Big Data 2015. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE, and I'm my co-host Dave Vellante with BoogieBond.com. Our next guest is Jack Gutenkopf, uh, VP of Big Data at Playtica. Um, Built engineering teams, been involved in a lot of stuff, going back to Microsoft to, to gaming, cutting edge, worked at Twitter. Yeah. Um, Twitter so you're very familiar years. with social data yeah. and gamification and uh, unstructured data. Yep. Um, welcome to theCUBE. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so let's get right into it. So um, obviously, if you look back at the developer market going back you know, to when we were growing up from in the 80s and 90s, very simple. Get a developer kit, you program stuff, you push it out to a server, yeah. you let rack and stack. Now you got the cloud, data tsunami is here. Yeah. So a lot of apps are being successfully developed because of the data. Whether it's gaming, I mean certainly Twitter's been data driven. Yeah. What's going on and what's the bottom line right now? What's the most important thing happening in data relative to these new apps, these new platforms? Oh, that's a great question. I think um, data's playing a much bigger part than it ever did before. People are making business decisions uh, using lots of data. Um, Twitter, of course, uh, social media, we had a pretty big Vertica uh, cluster there, as you, as you might imagine. Uh, in fact, uh, the Vertica uh, was actually, they used Vertica at Twitter before HP actually commercialized it, so they were early <laughs> So did adopter. Zynga, so did Facebook, yeah. so did everybody else, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We were, Columnar we were, store is very popular. It turns out it works pretty well <laughs> for a data warehouse. And uh, especially uh, in the in the gaming industry, we're, so we're in the we're the social casino uh, leader in the in the gaming industry. We have World Series of Poker, Slotomania, uh, Bingo, uh, Bingo Blitz, and a number of properties. About about ten, about a thousand employees worldwide. Uh, and you know, it's kind of a, a velocity and a variety of data mm -hmm. with the number of you know events in a game. Uh, but our games are literally we have a version of our game every week. Uh, based on data and behavior of the users, so it plays a huge, huge part in. in and you're our from business. Santa Monica. Yeah, yeah. So you got Riot Games down there, another gamer yep. helping, right? Yeah, they're they're oh, right big. next door, actually, in Santa Monica area. <laughs> so you yeah. guys could hear all the coffee at the coffee shops talking about data, Hadoop clusters, gaming yeah. more than anything really needs the data. I mean, how do you know? I mean, you keep track of everything, and everything has to be tracked, whether it's points, gains, this and that. I mean, it yeah. is simulating probably the most. Demanding, yeah. Uh, that's low one of the latency that, requirements. Yeah, that's one of the things that attracted me to it. I mean, of course, Twitter was volume, uh, so that was another challenge. Of course, you know, just sifting through the amount of data, and of course, uh, Vertica helped us, you know, uh, do analytics over it. Uh, in 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 gaming, it's a, a lot of different variety. We have a lot of different behaviors, uh, but really, I think the coolest thing, honestly, is that. Um, the user's actually driving uh, the experience. So, you know, if they're playing the game and, you know, they don't enjoy it, you you know, the data tells you that. Or if you roll out a new feature or functionality and they don't like it or in the social, they're chatting about how much they don't like it, um, it's, you have to change the game. And it's it's different than you build a game. You know, it's not like a, a Field of Dreams where you, you, build the, you build it and hope they come. Uh, you you build it, they use it. Uh, you look at the data, you do the analytics of the data, and then you uh, change the game so that you know they're happy with the game. And it's it's very customer driven. And so what about when you hit a blockbuster? I think like a reality TV show that's super hot, and and how can you use the data to keep it hot, to keep it interesting? Have you had some experiences along those lines? Yeah, um, in the in, around the gaming yes. and, and such. Um, absolutely, um, you know. We'll bring out a new game, for instance, and see see how they like it. Um, it's kind of interesting in our game. It's kind of a, I often tell people, so uh, one of our flagship uh, games is, is bingo. Actually, it's a social bingo game. Uh, I kind of talk about it as Carmen Sandiego meets bingo, and it's a game within a game. You're going down a path, and you play the game, and you can discover, you know, uh, different, you know, areas and uh, cities and things like that. So we keep it fresh by 
you know, not just your traditional, you know, your dobbing, your 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 bingo thing, your so it's bingo blitz. Yeah, bingo blitz. Yeah, exactly. So you've added yeah. the blitz piece to, to conventional bingo. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> and the social media, and so you can play all the time. We actually uh, ultimately roll up to Caesars uh, Casino. We're separate from the real money uh, gaming, but quote separate. we have a uh, sorry <laughs> separate quotes. <laughs> separate. Well, no, we're actually very separate because <laughs> okay. we're free to play uh, gaming. So with the gaming regulations, yeah, we're, right. we're very careful separate. about that. To be perfectly honest. Um, but uh, we do, because we have a tie with Caesar, like Caesar started the whole uh, total reward system. You know, you, you play at Caesars and they give you points and you can use it for, you know, things like whatever, uh, you know, eating and things like that. Um, we have a similar thing in our, in our games and on a lot of our studios, you can build, you can get points for the total reward system and you can actually use them in Vegas. And, and so we get a continuity if you go, you know, play slots in, in Caesars. And then you leave, what are you going to do? You can play online in your mobile device. And, uh, so and you've taken a lot of learnings from, from physical sure. gaming, brought it to the digital world, yeah. and you've cross-connected. Yeah, and I think worlds. the thing that's interesting is the amount of data that we, that we generate. I mean, imagine every slot, spin, every uh, payment, you know, everything that we, we track to see if the user enjoys the experience. All of that's tracked through, uh, through our data pipeline, in fact, what I talked about in our current session, or one of the sessions that I did was, there's a traditional ETL, you know, you extract the data, you transform it, you shape it, and then you load it like into a data warehouse into Vertica. Um, what we built is, uh, quite a new, new industry term here, I'm calling it the PSTL, you can call PISTOL. Uh, so it's parallelized streaming of data through, from like Kafka into, uh, into Spark, into a Hadoop cluster, and then we parallelize that and write that into Vertica. Um, so it's kind of a at scale with the volume of data that we deal with. Uh, you kind of have to change your ETL model. The good news is that Vertica can handle that volume of data very well and analytics uh, can be run off the back of it. You know? So what's your take on, on you mentioned Spark, yeah. you know, a lot of discussion, you know, everybody's excited about Spark, we're excited about Spark, yeah. we have a lot of internal discussions, well, you know, there's a little hype, you know, Spark's going to cream Hadoop. A lot of the vendors, the Hadoop guys, are like, whoa, 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 slow down. A lot of people saying, well, you know, Spark, it's early days, not, it's a couple years away. You're talking about actually diving oh, yeah. right in. I mean, What's your take on this from a practitioner's perspective? Yeah, um, yeah, I have to support the systems that I build, yeah. so no. <laughs> I'm very careful we about trust, what we do. <laughs> we trust what you say, right? I mean, yeah. if, if you're saying it's a couple years off, we believe you. Is it ready for prime uh, time? Are you? Yeah, it's ready for prime time. Are you using time. it today? Uh, what, what we are. are. Uh, I love Spark. Um, I think it's, uh, I mean, if you think of the traditional, you know, map, I filter, I write to disk, I read, I do, you know, lather, rinse, and repeat uh, at, you know, large yeah. volumes of data, especially unstructured the data. horrible stack, we call it. Well, it's a, <laughs> I mean, it's, a, when you have a lot of jobs running, like we did at Twitter, it was a huge uh, um, Hadoop stack. Um, reading and writing to disk all the time, uh, as opposed to, um, a model where you put in the data warehouse and you, you know, with with uh, Vertica with massive parallel processing and reading. Mm -hmm. um, the nice part about Spark is it's sort of a better better map reduce model, and it uh, you can have think of it as like tables in memory uh, 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 across your entire cluster. You can do parallelism of processing the data. We use it for doing the transform and the importing of data. Uh, and then we do massive parallel processing into Vertica, which is which is pretty new. I talked about the at the conference. I did a session on that. Um, we'll be talking about it a lot more and giving guidance. But I think Spark is great. Uh, I think the confusion is people work. People try to make um, tools and systems behave in ways they weren't designed for. Right? Vertica does a great job as a relational model and doing analytics and joins and it performs way better than any other solution because it's a columnar store. When you try to do a data warehouse like that in, in Hadoop that wasn't designed for that, it's not going to do well. So stop trying to make it be something that it, that, that it right. wasn't. And people did try to do it, you know, and they put Hive on it, so they had SQL semantics, which is great as a language in consuming the data, but at the end of the day, it was running MapReduce jobs. Spark has come along, and by the way, it's its its, it's fifth year anniversary, so it's, it's yeah, not it's as not young like as it, it used to be. Uh, we were at the Spark yeah. Summit and the JPL, uh, a lot of large companies, are, Yahoo is using yeah. it in a pretty oh, yeah. big way. So it's fairly robust. It's just, I think we need to be clear that it's 
not the replacement, you know, for the data warehouse. For so I got I got to ask you a question. You brought Spark. So I've been all over this all day today because it's become clear from all my interviews on the cube yeah. that um, we've been trying to tease out Hadoop versus Spark. Yeah. One's dying, one's winning, and trying to separate the hype. Yeah. And so it's interesting. When things are dying, they're adopted. So what, sorry? when they're dying, they're usually adopted, right? <laughs> so so when, they, when people think something's dead, yeah. the hype is dead. But yeah. what we're finding is Hadoop is actually in production. We had uh, Yellow Pages on earlier. He's like, yeah. hey, you know, I mean, I, I'm in production. So like, sure. it better not be dead because if it's... Well, if it, so the question yeah. of Hadoop as an ecosystem, maybe yeah. vendors will come and go, but for the most part, Hadoop yeah. seems to be solid. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Hadoop, Hadoop's going to be around for you know, another uh, generation. I think that- So is Hadoop dead? You, uh, no, no, is the no. short answer. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, if you think of Hadoop as two things, there's the storing of data in HDFS, you know, basically just think of it as writing a bunch of uh, data on disk, on a bunch of disks. Yeah. And then there's running the jobs to, to process it, the map reduce jobs. Um, the map reduce jobs and the legacy of data uh, that's there will always be there for like large batch operations. Uh, Spark is just um, a niche. No, it's Use not case. a niche. I wouldn't call it a niche Use at case. all. No, I would call it a. In some ways, um, it took all the lessons learned and the and some of the things that were painful in a map reduce world, where you you always read something, then write to disk, read, write, read, write. It's just not as performant. And try to bring more of it into memory to to do the processing. So I think. They'll coexist just like uh, vertical will coexist with Spark. And so with let me ask it differently. Does Hadoop need Spark more than Spark needs Hadoop? Does Hadoop need Spark? Um, that's kind of a hard one to, to answer because in some respects I think Spark will uh, be a better solution than some of the traditional uh, Hadoop jobs that were run. Uh, does uh, Spark need Hadoop meaning Typically, you'll have your Hadoop installation, right. and now you can also run yes, Spark on it because it exists. Now, right. So in some ways, it needs it, <laughs> right. it yes, needs that's the logic, right. It definitely needs it for the storage system and for you know where is my data the located. Bit bucket. So Spark definitely needs uh, HDFS, mm -hmm. um, a part of uh, Hadoop for yeah. sure. Uh, does Hadoop need Spark? I think in some ways it does because you'll still they'll coexist the big batch jobs that you already have. And now with other scenarios and other things you can do with Spark, I think they kind of need each other, yeah. That's why we love talking to practitioners, right? <laughs> yeah. cut, cut to the hype, I don't know if you heard Stonebreaker the other day. Yeah, right. he's so. my idol. <laughs> he actually signed, <laughs> well, I got him to sign my, he's, it, it, that was my bucket, number one on my bucket list was to meet him. And I uh, t told him about my talk, and he asked me and he said, well, tell me what your architecture is. I told him about Pistol, and parallel streaming, you know, transformation loader all the way through. And uh, he looked at me and he said, you're doing the right thing. So I just ran away because, you know, if once he tells it's you, you're doing something right. You know? well, it's amazing, in his keynote, he threw every, everybody who has anything to do with marketing under the bus. Yeah. Then he threw all the geeks in the audience under the bus. Right? Yeah, I love and everybody him. said, we love him. Yeah, it was great. He just <laughs> tells it like shooter. it is. Right. <laughs> it makes you think. Well, he, you know, it, I, I love, he did, a, he did a talk one time, and it was called, everything that you, they taught you in school about relational database management systems is wrong. And he did the talk, you know, as an invited speaker to, to some grad students or something. And so I can just imagine the look on the teacher's face just saying, wait a minute, I'm teaching, you know, these. Who and invited he, this you guy? Know, and he, he just says it like it is. He's like, Hadoop is good for nothing. But what he means is not good for the things that people are trying to make it. Yeah. You know, once your tool is a hammer and you start to think everything looks like a nail, yeah. I think that's where things go wrong. But like uh, Bill from YP, he was on a panel that we were on. Uh, he absolutely uses it in the right, you know, use scenarios. Yeah, perfect. And he's man. starting to use Spark as well for different use cases, which yeah. I think for for in, for in memory distributed data sets and processing memory uh, um, uh, uh, kind of think of it as like in memory tables and doing transforms on it and then getting it into Vertica from there it's a great solution so, so you guys I, I think it helps Vertica a lot because yeah. it gets more data in yeah and then, <laughs> then they can perform and use their performance levels then it's a, it's a coexistence yeah. so I, I totally agree Absolutely. I think there's a lot of coexistence yeah. you know we're moving from this old mutually exclusive world I have this therefore I can't use that yeah, Seeing a lot agreed. of startups use Vertica. I mean, venture back startups. It's not a zero sum game, as Bill Clinton would say, right? Yeah, I mean, when you have a tier one VC investing real money in a startup, ex Google, ex Apple, these kinds of 
uh, pedigree. They know their stuff, and then they have experience of scar tissue. Again, they're building the future because they're living it. Um, they're yeah. using OEMing Vertica. That never would have happened 10 years ago. I agree. I, I think mean, the, I think in, in our model, so we, we ingest data into Kafka. It's a great model. Kafka's very robust. It's being used by LinkedIn. It's been used by Twitter at scale. So as you're streaming in data in parallel, we use Spark into Hadoop. We don't use Hadoop to run MapReduce jobs, to be honest. We use Spark to ingest that data in parallel. But use the HDFS to store it on. Exactly, for long-term cold storage. It's going to be slower than Vertica, so we're going to put old stuff there. That's okay. We transform it in, in memory in, in, in parallel, and then we write it into Vertica in parallel, which is kind of neat that we're sharing some uh, new information about how to write into Vertica in parallel, and, and Vertica uh, announced that they're going to uh, make the hash available that makes all this happen. It's kind of more on my GitHub uh, wiki about it, but having the data warehouse and having that entire pipeline and be able to process the data, uh, there's a total coexistence, you know, from, from the kind of queuing the streaming to the doing stuff in memory for transactions and then putting it into Vertica for an analytics. And so, yeah, there's an absolute. What, what's happening to the analytics piece of that pipeline? It's, it, a lot of the analytics is highly customized today. Colin talked about, you know, the ERP days that used to be highly yeah. customized, then it became packaged. Will Will, will analytics and big data analytics go the same route or? So I think the, I think the field of analytics and analysis and business intelligence as we know it and going towards more of the data science is literally just at the infancy even though we've done so much with it. We look at analytics across the entire pipeline. So traditionally you're going to do some analytics in your data warehouse and in Vertica but if you have old data, you want to merge with that. So you're going to do some of it more, kind of in our sort of middle tier in this, you know, kind of Spark HDFS, you know, model. But also as it's real time streaming. So imagine this: we, you'll do models and learning using all of your uh, Vertica data, right? And all of your old data that you do user behavior, etc. And then what we want to do is use that to like get as close to the user experience as possible. So as the data is coming in from the game and they're streaming, we can see what the behavior is, compare it to the to the models from machine learning and actually then feed it back to the game as near real time as possible so we can even shorten up the loop from one week of turnaround to actually dynamically changing the game based on what they like. That's the field of predictive analytics. That's, and taking that's it as the close to space. real time as you can get exactly. in gaming. <laughs> and that's what we're trying to do with, yeah. with the analytics is get more predictive analytics more prescriptive analytics, and that field is just exploding. And, and the amount of data to process much tighter to the yeah. app. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, it's all about the user and the user behavior, and that's what we're you know pushing that envelope on in the game. And again, the, the feedback is critical for you guys because it's either they leave the game, and you can see where they, yeah. they drop out too. It's like they just this one spot, people are dropping off. Absolutely. In fact, there's a whole game economy ar around this because it's virtual currency. So imagine like the U.S. economy. We have inflation and deflation. Imagine that. You, you want all the money, and then there's no money for you to be able to play with. It's game over for us as the company. <laughs> so to manage that uh, as Got well. A little deflation going on, let's change the game. <laughs> exactly, we can't just print more currency. <laughs> We're not like the US government. <laughs> I, tell my, I tell my son who's now 20, um, multiplayer gaming is really going to be the future of work. Um, if you look at simulations of gaming, yeah. it truly does represent Real, I mean, it, it's a virtual space. Yeah, it's not virtual reality like Oculus Rift or Second Life, right. but it's virtual. There are a lot of parallels. Yeah, in fact, at the keynote, uh, uh, Poppy talked about like the parallels of gaming and, and user uh, behavior and training each and life in general. And yeah, there's a lot of. Uh, I find it fascinating. That's what brought me to the gaming. Jeff, uh, thanks, J Jack. Thanks so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. Um, give you the final word. Share with the folks out there this event because, I mean, we've been here for three years, so we've been saying it, but um, in your own words, sure. what's going on here? What's so special about this event? Uh, I was just telling Judy, who is kind of one of the uh, coordinators here, I was here last year. Uh, I've been to a lot of events, Spark Summit, and many, many, many other events, uh, mostly technical events, of course. Um, by far and away, just uh, being honest, this is the best event that, I, that I've ever been to. I came back again this year because I want to speak about the PSTL architecture, of course, and, and Vertica. You can't, th there aren't events like this where you can actually talk to developers. I mean, that's why we kept, it's, it, the price of admission, it, that's worth it. You can literally talk to the Vertica developers, get the internal information that you just can't get anywhere else, yeah. and you can tell them your problems, you can, you know, 
we're working on things with so many other teams. Spark, actually the Vertica Spark uh, connector, we're yeah. working with Vertica on, on that as well. So to be able to have this opportunity yeah. to actually share, and of course with you know people of like-minded people in, in the big data space. Yeah, no heavy uh, sales, no scripts, all no, authentic. No, it's, it's good. Well, the thing, I'll tell you what, the thing I love as well is that uh, I was on a panel and HP and Vertica are perfectly fine with us just saying it like it is. You know, these are the problems that we had in your product, and they're like, "Fair enough, we'll work on that." So yeah. you don't, you know, it's not a, it's, it's just unfiltered and it, like, like Stonebreaker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's why yeah, I love right. it, right? It's, it's just like it goes, it goes back to the roots. I mean, I spent nine years at HP back in the '80s and '90s yeah. when Bill and Dave were. I remember meeting them at when I my employee orientation. It's in their DNA. In fact, their product guide was like an engineer manual back in yeah. the day. They were a very engineering focused company. Yeah, it and shows. So to me, it's back to the roots for them, and I think this is a shining example of the HP way, Dave. So yeah. it's really, congratulations to Vertica. So thanks for thanks yeah. for coming on theCUBE to sharing the insight oh, on so what's going on in the gaming and yeah. the architecture. We love peeking under the hood because, and certainly gaming's hot. Thanks so much, really sure. appreciate it. This is theCUBE live in Boston. We'll be back after this short break.